Well, folks, it's time to kick it old school. Welcome, everyone, to the Miles and Crawford Variety Hour. Welcome! Ooh. Welcome! Whoop, 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 whoop. Um, so, it has come to my attention that the world is falling apart. Uh, you think I notice that, but <laughs> it's like I'm just slowly awakening as humans. That's what we do, but... Uh, has anyone else noticed this? Yeah, you know, just like utter, complete disruption of our essence is just pretty much in shambles. So, uh, let's not, okay? Sure, this could be fixed by... Uh, gun regulations, equality for all, healthcare given as a right? Ow, oh, maybe we should just be kind to one another. <laughs> oh, now come on now, that's not a... That's not, that's a silly proposition. All right, all right, okay, Miles. Let's not jump the bridge here. Jump the bridge. Uh, okay. <laughs> I've never, never heard jump the bridge, but I'm gonna go with it. Uh, okay, I obviously. The log, but instead, yep. like, remember when you were a kid? Did you guys ever pay yeah. jump the log in your neighborhood? Yeah. Okay, so it's like that, but the world's in fucking shambles, so it's not a log anymore. It's a fucking bridge of hell. Okay. Do you people? Do you understand? <laughs> This is what's going on. Okay, so, uh, obviously, really, really enjoy this complete night or chaos we have chosen for ourselves, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we're denying science and we're denying climate change and, uh, and wait, yeah, we're de denying all that was like the best thing we could have done for ourselves. And, uh, tearing down the earth as we speak is totally working for us, guys. Yay. Yay. Yay! For ruining the Yay. earth! Woo. Yeah. But wait, wait, wait. Did you see that they said that Sunday is now the end of the world again? Oh, again? It's like all the time. Constantly. <laughs> it's always. Yeah, this one is uh, <laughs> the planet. The end. Yeah, a uh, planet near a beery, I think is what they mm. call it. Yeah, that, that was supposed to kill us like November. No. September twenty third, and now it's killing us in November instead. Is that the the theory about the planet X that the Silverians live on, and it's the mysterious planet that NASA won't tell us about? They yeah. call it Planet X. Yeah, and yeah, that's... and all about that because when we told you, my boyfriend's a conspiracy nut. The Sumerians are coming back for us, y'all. Planet X is out there. And it's gonna Once just tear run. us apart with math, massive, massive, for math, math, massive, 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 just one no, podcast you can't. <laughs> making fun of somebody. <laughs> you know yeah. what? You Listen. That's okay. <laughs> Back to Garrett. <laughs> Back okay. to Garrett. Garrett, we love you and miss you. We do. I haven't heard much from Garrett, have we? No, Garrett is uh, loving life out in California right now. Mm. And... Uh, He's getting so all glad. sunny and pretty and fucking awesome, you piece of shit. And, uh, yeah, so Garrett's doing great, but, uh, he's, I, I actually, uh, sent him, like, I don't know, 17 gifts today, like, in a row, uh, for fun. <laughs> I'm like, oh hey, my! Are you? You want some picture? I like took every screenshot of like dumb memes that I've either downloaded or screenshot of, and I have a folder for that, especially like ones I need to use more often. Yeah, yeah. I just you know, I, I would have to keep googling them. Mm -hmm. You know, like prove my point. Like the all houses matter comic. That's one of my favorites. That's when somebody's like. Well, what about me? What about you, you beautiful white male? <laughs> <laughs> you, oh no, I saw a really good one on Twitter, which I did not take a picture of. I was really pissed about. Um, it was, it, oh, when people say that they don't watch the news or read the news because they don't need to know what's they, going on. It's about... Doesn't that piss you off so yeah. bad? Like, I don't, uh, I don't want to strangle you, but you're you're pushing me, and I feel like this justified homicide. <laughs> it is. And they said, wow, like, how privileged must you be that the news legitimately doesn't the affect news you at me all? Out, it is. It is the bumming. News. 
But you yeah, yeah, but I still kind fucking of read know it. about what's going on. I mean, at least with like somebody outside of your little. No, bubble. that's still that's like somebody who would be pissed off because nobody told them an asteroid was about to hit. Like, oh, nobody told me. Are you serious? Nobody told me. I was, like, so busy being, like, white girl wasted that I had no idea that there was even an asteroid. Like, why? What's going on? I need to get my latte. Why is nobody at Starbucks today? You know, I think that we're coming up on, <laughs> I think, like, with Facebook and the whole Russia meddling thing mm -hmm. and all this stuff, um, I think our country has become... Like, they can't tell the difference between reality and non-reality. Because we have all these reality shows that are actually scripted and blah, blah, blah. That, you know, like, voting in Donald Trump, there were 16 Republican candidates. And some of them I would have been okay with. And you getting into office. Um, and out of everybody, he beat everybody. Because, one, he's a reality star. And he got all the free press. I mean, the only, they only reported on him. Mm -hmm. So none of the Republican voter base got to hear from any of the normal people. I mean, Ben Carson and Trump were the two leaders, you know? Like, uh, I don't know if all this crazy Carson guy tried. here. Like, I don't like him. Walking around aimlessly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, like, Ben Carson's an idiot. Did. Don't get me wrong. That guy being a neurologist is shocking. But... What I appreciated about him was at some point during his run um, for being a president, you know, he got mocked because he thought, like, silos in the Egyptian pyramids were, like, made of the same shit because he's so dumb. Uh, but he, you know, talked about how, you know, we all were blowing, like, um, all these wars out of proportion, blah, blah, blah. And we're like, you're a fucking mo Like, you have no idea. So Ben Carson said... Yeah, you're right. I don't. And he got on a plane. And I forget which country he went to. Um, it wasn't Syria, but it was somewhere near there. Um, and to see that, like, oh, like, people are really dying of starvation. And this is an actual problem. And I just, just didn't know about it. So... He was a fucking jackass, but he at well, least no, he took one so step forward of yeah. like, yeah, well, he was totally unqualified, but... I mean, he was insane. Yeah, but I, I mean, like... what would he be doing right now, though? Like, if Ben Carson was president, let's... We're about to go into some space stuff shit anyway, so, like, let's go into fucking weird theory here. Ben Carson won in... January or November, whatever you know, got elected wow. in office right. fucking January 21st. So, one, would the woman's march happen underneath Ben Carson? Two, would that have allowed us to stay apathetic um, and wait and see, quote unquote, to see what he would have become? Um, and three, what the fuck would Twitter be right now if Ben Carson was? Pre <laughs> I mean, seriously though, like, what would oh, no. uh, what would all these people be doing if Ben Carson had won the presidency? I, I, well, I mean, you know, the really interesting concept. To be a puppet, anyways. You know, it doesn't seem like they have any real control. Oh God! Oh, we no. saw that with Obama. He didn't, couldn't get anything done. Yeah, because you mean know, Obama, he didn't do shit. I mean, it's not like he called out the Keystone Pipeline or anything. <laughs> Listen, I want to do a public service announcement for those that live in upstairs apartments. My computer is right next to my window, and it's chilly out. So I have this can of root beer. And it's warm, so I thought, you know what, I'm just going to set it out on the roof, get nice and cold, and I'll drink it. Um, it rolled down, and it's in my gutter now. So. <laughs> when you heard me a second ago, and I was like, oh no, because that was the dreams of that frothy cold <laughs> root beer leaving my life. So, oh, goodbye, oh, root beer. Rest goodbye, so, root beer. If you're oh. going to use your roof as a refrigerator, please <laughs> make sure that you set it on a steady. I see you out there. It's calling me. I guess it's this curtain. Otherwise, I'll, <laughs> you're gonna, I'm going to keep looking at it like a cat beer. outside at your window. Uh, then I'm going to start to feel thirsty. Mm. You know, like I can't even do I can't. Oh, I'm so thirsty right now. No. <laughs> um. Anyways, what were we talking about? Oh. 
Ben Carson. Ben Unless Carson. Unless he has some crazy ideas, but I really think that the president is basically just like the face of others that get to do whatever the fuck they want. Right, and um, they are. They're crazy, but uh, let's talk about things that we semi know about, uh, which is called astronomy and astrology. Uh, which scientists get real, real, they get real sensitive about it. And we're, we know there's a difference, guys. There is a difference between astronomy and astrology. Uh, and we're going to be talking about both of them because, well, you know, we need something lighthearted to talk about. <laughs> That's yeah, why. You know, this has been a, a really of... fucking depressing week, so. <laughs> sure has, man. Everybody's I... putting their hands on everybody else. Oh my god, I just, I want to cry. I do. The I think pussy I already have. is widespread, everybody. It's widespread. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Can, you know, come on now. We can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. Let's just. Yep. So, so um, we're going. This uh, week I started, uh, I, I started writing uh, a little bit about. I've always been doing into astrology, like you see star charts, but you know, horoscopes, things like that. I don't put a lot of oomph into. But I do think that there's something about like how the moon affects our tides. We can observe that. Um, but what if the other planets affect us and we just don't, we can't, just because we can't see it, feel it, touch it, measure it by a normal scientific method doesn't mean it's not there. Um, Astrologers believe that there's ages, and there's 12 ages, one for each sign. And right now, we've gone from the age of Pisces, and we've moved into the age of Aquarius, which is uh, a beautiful... I'm an Aquarius! Woo! Aquarius! Yeah. Woo! All right, I'm done. <laughs> Miles is an Aquarius, so this is her age. This is her jam. This is my um, time. This is when we put on Jefferson... Uh, wait, shit. Jefferson Airport uh -oh. in the age oh, of Aquarius. Oh, yeah. yeah. There we go. Oh. It's hard to get that song out of your head once it, you get it, it in is. there. It is. It's so hard. And then um, uh, Douchey Davy Duchovny did a great uh, small mini series called Aquarius, and it was all about Charles Manson, who's getting ready to die. So, but anyways, it's oh, the age I of saw Aquarius. That. Yeah, it's really good. Anyways, Aquarius, go on, Copper. <laughs> uh, so, um,. Let's see here. Oh, we have this wonderful document um, that we typed up, and I kind of got a little, little ahead. Um, the Pisces area or era area. The, uh, uh, um, that was all like dedicated to uh, monotheism, I guess. Is I think that's how you would say mono. Yeah, monotheism. And astrology tends to be more of a, a theology more than a science. It's more of like a belief or whatever. Um, it was characterized by the rise of many religions such as Christianity, Islam, and Buddhism. This represents the spiritual nature of the Pisces. Throughout most of the Pisces, though, the spiritual side is for the most part seen as the truth hidden behind the five senses. Spirituality was seen in relation to the world not through the innate knowing of a divinity. The fall of Rome began at the beginning of this age, as with all great cycle changes in the age of Pisces, it began with chaos. Rome fell and chaos was rampant as a great change of power began. It was the birthing of the Middle Ages. An age lasts about 26,000 years or so. Um, so anyways, that's, uh, that's a little bit about what age we left, that's what age we're going into. So, in the world of astronomy and astrology, there are a lot of factors we should be taking a look at. During some reading, I came across this bit of information. For centuries, modern science has been shrinking the gap between humans and the rest of the universe. From Isaac Newton showing that one set of laws applies equally to falling apples and orbiting moons to Carl Sag uh, I almost messed his name up. Sagan intoning that we are made of star stuff, which I think is cool. We're just stardust. That the atoms of our bodies were literally forged in the nuclear furnaces of other stars. Even in that, that context, Gregory Matloff's ideas are shocking. The veteran physicist at New York City College of Technology recently published a paper arguing that humans may be like the rest of the universe in substance and in spirit. A 
proto-consciousness field could extend through all of space, he argues. Stars may be thinking entities that deliberately control their past. Put more bluntly, the entire cosmos may be self-aware. Um, um, wait, so yeah. when we are wishing on stars, they can hear us? They can want, yeah, and you know what, that's <laughs> why mean... sometimes, like, your wishes come true, because what, he was actually listening, like, he wasn't sleeping, or was talking to his friend, you know? Um, really? That's awesome. All right, I was so like, well, something like that, depending on how much you believe in astrology as well. And astrology, which is often not considered a science, or a credible field of study laid by the sciences, uh, and I already kind of you know more of a theology. The critical study of the nature of the divine is actually what that means. Uh, some believe much can be gleaned from astrology in the way the planets align. Um, I don't know if anybody remembers, but there was a joke uh, six months ago or so about, or maybe even a year ago, about Metro Mercury being in retrograde, which tends to cause um, a lot of bad luck for people. And so a lot of people were, you know, like fucking Mercury in retrograde. Uh, that was the joke. So. Uh, yeah. Oh, where was I here? See, I, st I got this wonderful paper, and I just keep losing my place. Astrology and the way the planets align. I found it, just as you said it. Go oh, me. Good. <laughs> Astrology and the way planets align. They're placing at times of turmoil and possible effect they have on our planet, much like the moon affects our tides. Could the other planets affect us in ways the naked eye can't see, nor be observed via conventional scientific methods? And I looked up an article, I looked at a couple of um, things like, what, what does science say about astrology? And it doesn't check their, like, four boxes, you know, for... And astrologers don't publish peer-reviewed journals and things like that. Um, the, this writing isn't... Or this podcast isn't to debate the merits of astrology and whether it's a sweet... Uh, how do you say that? Sado? Suedo. Pseudo. 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 See that? Where's my fucking cowbell at, Miles? <laughs> Wait, hold on. Say it again. Pseudo. <laughs> Fuck yes. Give me a bang it. <laughs> Science or lacking in proof, but more of an exploration of an idea that seems interesting to us as an observation of the current state of the world. So, instead of going through science and like, what the hell's going on with this or that, we thought we'd bring you something a little bit weird. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Is it uh, the this place, <laughs> yeah. Uh, this place is really, uh, I don't know, this place as in the earth, um, the country, where we are, the, we the are state, in the universe. where we are in the universe. I mean, I can't watch um, the cosmos without getting a fucking anxiety attack. And it's not because I don't love it. But because it frightens me how literally, how small and insignificant we actually are. My narcissism this is comes scary. out. And I'm like, yeah, like no, I'm, I'm important. not important. What the fuck? And that really sucks. Um, so uh, so the place is really fucked up right now. And as an Aquarius, uh, I probably should some, you know, take some sort of responsibility for that. This um, is your age. So. <laughs> this is my age. <laughs> Um, Mine's coming up, so I'm just going to sit back here and eat these chocolates. Oh, there you go. There you go. And uh, see, and that's just it. Like, on that note, like, uh, we have mentioned uh, in the age of Aquarius, uh, the influence of Aquarius began actually around the French Revolution when their slogan was freedom, equality, fraternity. These values represent the Aquarian age. Uh, the age and of Aquarius. Fraternity. It's like community, which we yeah. talk about all the time. By the way, it's not just a bunch of boys hanging out in a house in the stars. And, uh, you know, bah, we're men. Let's whip out our dicks and Whoa! take 18 shots in 20 hours and kill one of our people. No, this it was actually like fraternity, as in community. And that is why you... Um, when fraternities and sororities get together, you do know that they have a lot of community work that they do, uh, not just to kind of boost their names up and to help out their resume, but it is because it's actually part of the meaning of what they do. Um, the age of Aquarius is causing great turmoil in order to make room for new values of love, brotherhood, unity... Let's wait. No. New values of love, brotherhood, unity. Hey, hey, hey. 
<laughs> and integrity. <laughs> um, everything with Piscean values is being exposed and taken down. Uh, this includes governments, corporations, individuals, and even very personal relationships. Many call this a disaster as a, we as a world appears to be falling apart. But, I mean, is it because, I don't know, maybe it's my my own theory is that it's not falling apart this isn't a bunch of you know disaster i mean don't get me wrong 45 fucking cheeto in chief is a fucking disaster and his vice president is a fucking disaster but and kim jong and the fucking north koreans uh, everything okay i get it i get it but a part of falling apart is getting back together um, the Aquarian age, you know, points, uh, to the direction of our own evolution and consciousness. Uh, we are each being asked to make a choice. We can cling to the old outdated values or adopt, adopt the new evolving ones. Um, our happiness and peace depends on our choice and a change will take place whether we like it or not. Um, and so we got to, you know, and that's what we have to start doing is, uh, you know, are we paying attention to how other planets align and how it affects this planet? And are we paying attention to, um, you know, like Crawford was talking about how the moon affects our tides? Um, how do we know that other planets also have an effect not measured by conventional means or the current accepted scientific method? Um, so... It's one of those things that we are really, you know, excited to get into because, uh, especially for me, I really try to believe in um, something much bigger than myself. I'm not religious. I'm not not religious. I'm in that yeah. really weird, you know, middle ground. Um, I love astrology. Uh, I, I used to too. play with tarot cards. Um, me too. Palm reading, numerology. Uh, yeah, yeah, you know. I and, do my own star charts. And, and. You know, I can see how people see that as being hokey or whatever, but I used to visit this website. I still do once in a while, okay? Leave me alone. Uh, and But it, it you, you put in information or whatever, and it would tell you, and they have like, I don't know, a hundred different lines, and they were different colors. And it would tell you like where your spot, like magnetically or whatever, astro astrologically, like where you should be at in the world. And, and I was supposed to be over in Scotland somewhere. Would be like my happy place. Like this is where you should be. I well, when I, I move happy. to Ireland, then you can just come with me and then you can go to Scotland and we'll just, yeah, I'll just do take the boat over that way. Yeah. Just I'll do it. The boat over. It. I mean, <laughs> then you have to say fuck with a, uh, with an E. Fuck. Fuck it. Oh man, I love. Oh, I know you have to because you're supposed to belong in Scotland. Uh, you uh -huh. get on the Scottish Reddit, right? Where everybody oh, on Reddit talks in Scottish, Scottish. Yes. Yeah, whatever. And it's fucking hilarious. Anyways, go on. Sorry. <laughs> no, I I actually don't have anything to add to that. So. Oh, uh, oh okay. Um. Oh, wait, maybe I do. I mean, let me look. No, I'm just kidding. No, no it is. But I think that you know. Um when we're going into things like astronomy versus astrology. So I like knowing why the stars exist. I like knowing how the planets around us are acting. Um, we need to be aware if there's a temperature change, not just on earth, but on other uh, possible inhabitable planets that can become habitable over time because yes. we've only been around for so long and so well, we I don't know wonders. how these things are going to change i mean what is it like really in in, in honesty because i don't i don't know <laughs> how Nobody many does. years is on mars compared to a year on earth you know well, everything so, around us looks dead like all the planets they look like they just, I don't know, like, and we're they the look last. Dead. They're not dead. You don't know. Well, I know, people. but like, and we're like the last planet in our little corner here. You know, <laughs> like we made it. We survived. Everybody, it's fine. Yeah, yes, we're, <laughs> we're the only planet out of all of them that you know, like, life began again after maybe it was like several asteroids when the dinosaurs died in our yeah. planet. Well, I mean, no we fucked shit up. I mean, the scientists, they dropped the ball. They told fucking Pluto it didn't exist. Oh, but and then Pluto, Pluto came back to is, heart. Yeah, but the Pluto is the Sounds planet adorable. of death. Um, there was this really funny meme where it was like, 
you know, uh, Pluto, it's not a real planet, blah, blah. So he took it off. And then everybody, it, it was the same year that every, all these big stars were dying. And everybody's like, wait, bring back Pluto. <laughs> you know? And now they Pluto is like, damn, that's where death lives. <laughs> you want to fuck with me? I ain't me. a part of your shit no more. I'm going to show you what's up. Uh, have, I mean, have you, what reminds me of a story. Have you ever read the, I think it's the Arabian Nights that this came out of? Or Aesop's Fables, but I'm almost sure it's Arabian Nights, and it's the guy who tries to outrun death. And every town that he goes to, he, death's already there. It's just funny. He's trying to outrun death, and he uh, can't. It's like, yeah, ha -ha. You, can't. you can't outrun Pluto. You can't outrun death. You can't, um... We can only run so long, and... That's probably where Santa lives, too. <laughs> exactly where Santa lives. Oh, Santa. Well, it takes a year to get back here, everybody. <laughs> All right. But I think when it comes, like I love um, now a lot a while not a long time ago. I would want to say about seven or eight months ago before uh, ninety two point five went away with their current broadcast. So there are new broadcasters I can't fucking stand. Oh really? To. I oh, don't. God, my radio has been messed up in my car for a minute. It's upsetting. So you used to have Eric Chase. Um, you had um, Megan. Um, shit, I follow her on Facebook. Uh, Megan Mick, Megan yeah. Mick, uh, Eric Chase, um, and their other friend, and I'm really sorry, but I enjoyed listening to them. So, and every Monday they had their um, astrology lady on. People would call in. Oh yeah, know, what's her name? Uh, Jed. I can't remember, but yeah. yeah, I used to listen to that. She was great, and because she was, I mean, she wasn't crazy thorough, but she, you know, gave people the roundabout answers, and I don't, you know, right. What, however she did but she really gave some really good insight to astrology and i loved i was always i would drive and be late to work if, if like aquarius hadn't come up yet like just tell me what's going on this week i need and, to uh, know <laughs> i need to know and i used to follow my astrology sign you know hardcore and i don't follow it as much because this is my time um this is my time to shine bitches uh but it's, I love being in an Aquarius, uh, mostly because I am a water barrier. Um, I'm very motherly in nature. I mean, I'm kind of a dick because I'm very honest with people, but I am, I have a very like caring sense to me. If you yeah, yeah. make it worth my time. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm a Gemini, so I have two personalities. So oh, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm the you... twin. Mm. I, I definitely feel like uh, my sign fits me and, and not everybody feels that way about their sign, but the thing that I find funny about Gemini's is I say you'll always hear them before you see them. So <laughs> my older sister is a Gemini, like, well, and she's the same way. Like you can hear her coming uh, uh, across the way, and I love seeing those old things. Like Aquarius will care and tell you, give right. me a reason not to, and I'm like, yeah, that's totally me. I will fucking devote my life to you, but the minute you cross me, like I'm like Pluto. Fuck you, bitches. I'm gonna fuck your shit up. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna wear my heart on my sleeve and then I'm gonna fuck you up. <laughs> you know? That's okay, though. That's okay. But I find so, it interesting you know, with, like, science. Like, how um, astronomers, you know, and, and how they are uh, just so, you know, into things. And astronomy in general. And about how the planets work. And we found this new seven dwarf planets. And right. I'm We're always finding out new information. And... and I think astrology is more closely linked to physics than it is astronomy. Only because physics studies things that we can't see or hear, feel, touch, you know, or observe. It's, it's Physics is really, really hard, you know, but they've come up with some really neat discoveries about how things travel. And we're always coming up with new information. Like, science isn't done. And that's something that upsets me is when... People say, well, it's been proven scientifically. Well, then two years, especially in physics, and then two years later, here comes, you know, oh, you know what? Actually, we didn't know this when we uh, decided that, but now we got to change it because we've come up with this. There's a difference between laws and theories. And, you know, astrology, because of its hokiness, or, you know, they just throw it all out. And I think. You know, I think there's something to the whole age of Aquarius thing, just because it, it just it describes what's going on so well right now, and it described uh, like the 1960s. I was reading about how um, it 
what we're going through right now is really starting to mirror what happened in the 60s and you know it's like almost like another uprising whereas Absolutely. in the 60s we we took a very dark path and now maybe we're going to do it a little bit different and we're going to take the right path this time yeah, and i exactly. love all those values about the age of aquarius and i really do think that's what we're collectively as a conscience and you know when we talk about the universe being conscience maybe that's what we're a part of you know the universe is us it's all of us so and i agree I and, I, and i love the, the point that you made about how we um can never stop learning science i mean it's not just um you know bill nye the science guy and, and neil degrasse tyson who have said these things but it's true because if you really think that science is done then you have ultimately put a fucking pin in humanity and said that's it there is no more um the great right. thing about science is that science is creating wonderfully creepy fucking things like science right now is creating um what is it like stem cell fucking meat you know like meat yeah. that's not even we won't even have to I eat that. yeah I do that. I, you know i'm so weirded out by it but they're creating um meat-based products without having us uh, destroy the planet basically is what it's there for and right you know and well, Neil deGrasse, see, though, I will uh, say like I want to put that out there is that the one great thing that he said um, was that the good thing about science is that it's true whether or not you believe in it and that's and that's true to a point but uh, yeah. then you find out new information that throws all that out you know that's that's what bothers me about science is I get the scientific method and I I, I love Neil deGrasse Tyson Neil deGrasse Tyson I really and Bill and I believe me they are so logical and they're always like you people are stupid listen <laughs> but the thing about scientists is they get so like uh, what well, they call it tunnel vision or whatever that they don't want to accept if you can't you know some people just can't accept if you can't see touch feel it hear it whatever observe it that it's not there when physics has observed like atoms and things that we can't see dark matter you know they're detecting things that we don't detect we can't detect at all on our own but they are and so i think you know we're just little babies in this world and trying to understand is just so silly so i just thought that you know when i was i don't even know how i came across that but i was reading about the age of aquarius and i was like that's really neat no, you know, it is. It, it's a really uh, it's evolution in our consciousness. That's what really caught my attention, and, and valuing each other. And great civilizations they fall and they crumble, and we've seen that in our oral history and the history that still exists in old books and things like that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, and I think there's a lot uh, when we talk about like the theory of evolution. Like it's a it's. There's, I don't know, it's it's like the theory of gravity. I mean, you, we all have to remember that when science first came to be, all of us remember about reading. And if you're not, if your kids aren't reading about how um, scientists were jailed and killed because they literally just wanted to prove that the Earth wasn't the center, you know, of the universe. It was... You know, right. those kind of things that were, we went from that and that the earth isn't flat. The earth is not flat. Uh, I'm going to say that. To right. All you fucking flat earth believers. You know because how it's, I it's, get it's about not, that flat earthness now. There, yeah, you can't, there's, there's so much out there. And the great thing is about science is that there is so much out there. And of course, there's the bad part about science. There is a scientific research that's being paid to not be told to us. There are things that are happening. And there's a lot of negative um, with that. We unfortunately have entered a time that because people are so stuck in their belief system like you like you said crawford if they can't feel it they can't touch it they can't hear it it's not real well the problem right. with that is is that you are stopping things like cancer treatments which we all know uh not nah, okay hold on reverse that we reverse that all know but Beep. the cure for cancer i'm gonna make a beep up it. noise you know <laughs> we reverse beep, beep, beep. see i had missy elliott and you had like a truck backing up so <laughs> <laughs> 
I don't even know what that was. That was our own mashup. I'm cool with it. Um, but we all don't believe it, but I do. I know the cure for cancer is already out there, in my opinion. And, um, and that's only because um, I think that we both don't trust the pharmaceutical. You know, yeah. they make a lot of money off chemotherapy. And at the time, it doesn't do anything but kill the person. Yeah. I, I, I struggle with thinking about if I got cancer, would I do chemo? Nope. Because... I, honestly, I don't think I would just because it kills your body. I mean, you're just whatever time you have left doesn't really extend. If 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 it were the kind where it was treatable, then yes, I probably would. You know, but if they were like it's just gonna extend your life by six months, I'd rather just boop. No. Nope. Actually, uh, uh, where I work, uh, I've talked about it several billion thousands of times. I work at a social club. It's an aging group. Um, and every time somebody passes away, they put a, a black cloth over a sign. Or our charter or whatever to signify and I'm not joking like every week there's a card out for somebody who passed away and uh, actually somebody that I had just waited on last week he stroked out and died and uh, they're having a service for him tomorrow but I'm just like good lord man <laughs> wow it's, people are really yeah dying well, off. And, and that's just one of those things where you know I've been uh, I was right there um, when when I'm like not right there but when one of my friend's father had uh, gotten cancer and uh, he, he you know they debated they debated a long time whether or not he was going to do chemo and you know he ended up dying from the common cold he didn't die from chemo he didn't die yeah. from cancer he died from um, he died from a common cold because it had killed his immune system and then I have my friend's mother um, who died of cancer, um, but that's because she didn't treat any part of the cancer. She it had come back in full force, um, and it had gotten to the point where it, it just, it wasn't just, you know, in her breast. I mean, it had gone full-fledged lymph it, nodes, it, brain. It, what do they call that? What, metastasized. Yeah, and it was everywhere. I mean, it was all over her body. Um, they went from giving her, like, four days to live, and she ended up living with her about two weeks um, but, and, and again, she had had the cancer, she had beat the cancer, the cancer had come back and she kind of refused to, I, the cancer came back without us knowing it came back. Um, so there's that. And I also know that she was really, you know, after, uh, beating can cancer the first time though, she was like, that's it. That was my second chance. And anything after this is just pure luck. And I don't want to ever go through that again and uh because it is it's, it's very um i don't know i've i've seen people go through it and beat it and so i'm not telling you to not go through chemotherapy but i am you know with crawford on the aspect that i don't when they tell me and it's not even about an if it, it really is about a win and uh when they tell me that i have it i i i really come to um right now in my head because they haven't told me so i could <laughs> flip the script but right now in my head i'm very like if i am told that i have cancer tomorrow i'm going to just go completely as naturalistic as possible i'm going to have every turmeric ginger fucking cocktail four times a day with you know, a handful of maybe some pain reliever, uh, relievers, and mm -hmm. I am I'm going uh, out a fuck ton of weed, out and I'm going to some fucking edibles, and you know, if I'm gonna go down, I I don't want, I never want my kids' memory of me to be in a hospital, whether it's of old age or cancer. I don't want to be fucking like um. You know what you just made me think of? Oh my gosh, what is it? Terms of a deer bit. Oh, uh, right. You love that movie? Because yes. I, I, oh, like, no, I can't. I can't. Oh, like, man. Oh, Tunes of the Deer Man and run. fucking Beaches. Like, I can't. I was just oh. going to bring up Beaches. Oh, oh I, my I'm God. sorry. You know what? Let's just take two minutes to talk about some films for women, by women, acted by women, whatever, are just amazing for all of us. You know, here's my top five real quick. Uh, Terms of Endearment, Beaches. I loved, um... Oh, oh my gosh! What is it? Fried green tomatoes. Oh it had, my god! Uh, Who didn't love it? Good. Uh, a league of our own. I love that one just because it was like, you know what? Fuck you. We're gonna play baseball. I don't give a shit. Or softball. No, they play baseball. Wait, um, are you talking about 
Wait. Oh, you, I think you said fried green. Oh, Gina I thought you said Davis. fried green tomatoes, and I was like, wait. Like it. <laughs> sorry, did like, sorry. Did I, that, did I say that right? Is that, that the name of the movie that I'm thinking? Oh, I mean, no, those no, are you're right. A League of Their Own was with Madonna and Rosie O'Donnell and fried, fried green tomatoes. Fried had, green tomatoes um, is about, like, uh, the, there was an abuse. I'm sorry. Listen, this movie's, like, 35 years old, so if I spoil it for you, you had time to watch it, okay? <laughs> um... It's about uh, there was an abusive husband and they killed him or whatever and did, did away with his body and they always protected the woman or whatever. But it was a really good movie. Um, I haven't seen it in a little while. Uh, Steel Magnolias. That's a oh, good one. Dude. I will still I'm cry. Dolly you Parker throw in the 80s. <laughs> fucking steel magnolia my way. I'm dead. Like I am. You just hand me a box of tissues fucking like a whole bottle of whiskey and just let yeah. me sit there and just cry my fucking eyes out because it is so it's so tough that movie breaks you on so many levels i i don't know how people are like uh what's still magnolias i'm like fuck you i'll kill you, you. have no idea no. <laughs> You didn't. Are you trying to rattle me up? Huh? Are you? You know that I've been five years sober from violence. I fucked a bitch up in like five years. You're about to make me lose my chip, girl. I mean, you know, there I'm are so... i taking my shoes off, my earrings off. Like, we're going to fight this out. And see, now, and now it makes me mad because you just, like, really went on my, like, my... Oh, dude, I, I do. I love, I love... Ooh, excuse me. I had a nice little burp there. Um, oh, it's her mating call, everybody. If you hear a stampede, it's men it, running for her and a couple of ladies. Look, uh, I am a world-renowned uh, belcher per my office I've and heard family. Them. I've heard them. <laughs> they I've are, heard them. They're pretty significant. And, uh, you got a good gastrointestinal tract there. You know, your GI is working, girl. <laughs> Which I just want to go ahead and say that I've taken like three poops today. I, did I tell you I want to fight? I did. I posted on my Facebook. I won a five pound candy basket from work. Oh my god, that's so awesome. It was a dollar a ticket and I, I have been trying to win these fucking candy baskets for a minute and I haven't. So uh, I won a five pound candy basket. I'm going to go ahead and say there's like a pound and a half of chocolate left in that mother. <laughs> I had to wear my Spanx to work today, everybody. <laughs> oh my god, that's so great. And That and, is so, and also so gross, and you so know. Gross, but Talk I mean, look, we're women and uh, guess what we're here. Women poop uh, too. Women pee scientific <laughs> fact. <laughs> We have observed the scientific method, and yes, poop does come it out. It does, it does. And I think that, you know, oh, see, and now I'm having a hard time. I'm like, because uh, I really, I know that Bend It Like Beckham was a totally directed and very female-oriented movie. Yes, um, but I didn't like it. I'm sorry. Um, what about Pretty Woman? Because uh, when I'm at work, that comes on at least twice a week while I'm working. Because really? somebody will leave it on TBS, which is kind of funny because I'll leave it on TBS. And I'll be like, you know, it'll be middle of the afternoon. And there's like maybe one person in there. And all of a sudden, I'll hear Family Guy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh. Uh, Clueless was channel. actually a female-directed <laughs> and female all-star cast. And I'm sorry. I love I Clueless. Too. I'm sorry. It's so fucking good. Um it's such a cute little movie. It is. Whatever. It is whatever. Whatever. Uh, by the way, uh, for all of those who don't know this, uh, side check because I want to let you know, The Hurt Locker was directed I... by Catherine Bigelow, and she is a female director, and The Hurt Locker. And she's good. She's so good. But the fact that everybody remembered the male parts in that, um, oh, they always that, do, yeah. You have the great, wonderful, if you have not seen it, you should. It's called The Iron Lady. You should watch it. It's beautiful. Meryl Streep, she was fucking great. She played the uh, minister, um, uh, Margaret Thatcher. Uh, so, you should definitely see that one. Um... Uh, Oh my god, there's the one. The kids are all right. That one I loved. Oh, that was uh, pretty good. You know, I really loved uh, particularly the 80s. And I guess maybe that's because it's the age I grew up in. But the 80s and 90s, I still watch a lot of movies from then because uh, I, I yeah. love them. And I really don't think that uh, uh, Hollywood has really put anything else out in a very long time that 
Yeah, I, that was uh, like that. I, Hollywood has just, just they're redoing That's why they're doing it. so many. Like, give it four. That's years. what I'm saying. It's like they're just doing all remakes. And you know what I think it is? Is the fact that we've come so far technological wise that a lot of story and plot lines just like you can. It, that's why we're. We, I think that we had so many period pieces now, and we're going backwards. Is because there were no phones or cell phones or computers. Because you know you can sum up a storyline in ten minutes. Like we can't find what's his name. Oh wait, he just texted me back. Yep. Movie over. Yep. Whoops. And, and and let's um, do something. Um, I want to give a moment to Sofia Coppola. Like, <sighs> yes, yeah, she is a director. Uh, she's a director. Um, she did my movie that I watched was so fucking moved by that I have never been able to watch it again because it's so, like I can't. Uh, the Virgin Suicides. I. Uh, I have that and never Dude, watched it. I have you? it, though. Because it, it came with American <laughs> Beauty. It was like a two-disc um, set. Okay, first of all, to watch American Beauty and the Virgin Suicide is asking yourself to put yourself in a deep fucking winter depression. Um, but especially... Well, okay, Kevin Spacey, <laughs> so I'm going to think about him touching little 14-year-old boys, which my son's going to be 14 uh, on Tuesday. Uh, no! Or, you no. know what I mean? Oh, yeah. you little babies all grown up. But if that motherfucker got touched, I know. Like, talking about oh, my me? God. We're just not talking about adult grown men touching you, yeah. son. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Um, have you ever heard? <laughs> you can hear him in the background a little bit. Have you ever heard of the uh, Bechdel test? I believe is how it's said. B e c h d e l. It sounds really familiar. You probably do. Like once I tell you about it, um, it's a way of evaluating whether or not a film or other work of fiction portrays a woman in a way that is sexist or characterized by gender stereotyping. Which I think I sent you an article because um we both love stranger things obviously but the article was talking about how none of the female there's a lot of female um stars in that you know that they feature in that show but none of them share any scenes together um you know except for here oh, and yeah. there very That's, very that was a huge thing in stranger things is that these women were really um uh, they're very strong roles. All of the women in Stranger Things right. are they're extremely strong female roles, but but they don't share any no, screen time don't. together. So in order to pass the Bechdel test, a work must feature at least two women, like me and you, um, and these women must talk to each other, like we talk to each other, and their conversation must concern something other than a man. Which I think our podcast, I mean, eighty percent, because we bitch about men a lot. But that's the Bechdel First test. Of all, like uh, two we women don't bitch talking about to each men. other. We bitch and, about one man and in we don't office. Sit and talk about men, and we. <laughs> We mentioned our, our husbands and stuff, but you know, that's how, and, but if you watch TV or you read a book or whatever, and you keep that idea in your head, you really do start to see like how our roles, even though these women played great roles, you don't, it doesn't occur to you. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, but they didn't share any screen time together at all, except for Max and Eleven a couple of times. Yeah. Um, and then uh, I ha it escapes me right now, but Winona Ryder's character. I never remember. Joyce. I, Joyce, yeah. Um, there we go. I never remember her name second, either. I'm like, it's Winona. Like, I'm like, mm, there's Winona. We're good. That's kind of like Orange is the New Black. I don't know if you've uh, watched that First at all. Season, but I would say season that. Season two and maybe snippets. That's a lot. That's a lot of lesbian sex, everybody. <laughs> it's kind of like, okay. You know, I really like the show Glee. I thought it was a really funny... I, the first two seasons or so I watched. I thought it was really funny, like the dialogue and everything. But I don't like musicals. I mean, some I do, but I think I've mentioned this before. But uh, So I used to fast forward through their little songs and stuff because I just wanted to watch the show. Uh, so I think that's kind of the same thing. Like where you're with Orange is a New Black is you're just constantly like, eh, there's some more oral sex. <laughs> okay okay you know that's something that drives me crazy or i'm starting to get annoyed with is you can't watch anything anymore without sex in it i'm not joking i literally everything you put in it's like okay i get it like american horror story good God. lord i used to watch that it's fallen downhill to me i personally i'm just i haven't even been able to watch this last season and usually i'm you know i watch it every week but in the last three seasons i'm it's just so like hard. okay they actually stupid. did a really good um 
uh, I was reading because, you know, I'm a really big fan of the show The Middle. I love... Oh, me oh, too! God. Oh, Frankie's my spirit yeah, mom. Yeah, but you know what sucks about Frankie in real life is that she's a staunch conservative. Um, is yeah, she? total Dom Donald Trump supporter right there, but... Uh, uh, I know. But however, uh, however, uh, I will not. I will not allow. I just found this out this week, so I won't. I'm not going to um, let that uh, wash my perspective of the show away because there are a few things right. that I think that are being done right um, outside of Blackish. I I love that show. I like. I I sent. I actually sent Miles mm -hmm. a link. I love that show, and. Uh, we did an episode, I believe it was episode four, which is one of our highest listened to episodes. So I think it's a topic that's on a lot of people's minds. Um, I'll find it in our stats. That's always a reoccurring one that I find is one that we did on mm -hmm. Freedom. Um, every week we have like, you know, um, I don't know, however many listens. But it, every week since we've done that, that was back in July. I believe that was our July 4th podcast. It was. We talked about um, incarceration. Uh, but what I like about Blackish is they very quickly break things down. It's not boring. It's just here's a quick facts. This is how we got here. Their um, season opener and I fucking asked Miles, killed me this I said, year. Like, oh um, yeah, <sighs> they 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 tackle some very hard topics. And I've been meaning to ask my black friends. I really haven't discussed the show with anybody. But you know, like, how do you feel about that show being black? Like, is it is it is it hitting the nail on the head representing? black people's problems or is it does it to them feel like it's uh a wish cartoonized yeah. i don't know how, and you I, know and i think that's right like, like it's not helping it's hurting and i don't think it is i think it's I think it's opening up there's the thing about um white people is a lot of white people who've never been around black people they get very excited when they get around black people because oh my god here's a black person here's my chance you know we've been segregated even though we're not segregated uh, them up uh, segregated <laughs> I got it. I got it. Bitches. Um, and because I've heard black people say like, you shouldn't try. So white people try too hard. Um, and that's just because a lot of us were just so eager to include, you know, I, I just, I want to be a friend so bad, <laughs> you know, no, and, and, it's I, I just, truth, and that I show know. actually kind of shows, um, uh, all, of, all of his like, white how they portray the white people, right? Like there's, so, yeah. Like they, they describe it so well as it's like, we're not trying too hard. It's just we're just that excited to get some diversity in our life. You know, like, like oh my gosh, yes, finally. You know, I get to not just see it on TV or read it. I'm actually interacting and I'm getting to know and it's it's normal for me now, you know. And then it gets to the point where it doesn't, that they don't notice. That's not the first thing when they describe somebody. Like, I saw a black dude down at Circle K and he makes his coffee the weirdest way. And so it's just like, I oh mean, I just saw this dude down at Circle K and he just... There's no reason to describe a person's color when you're describing them. But that's why I try to tell my black friends, like, that's why we get so excited. Or or, or black white people tend to, you know, overdo it a little bit because they're just, they're just that excited. They're just trying to under, like, uh, and see, and like. Right, they're just trying to understand. And, and, and but without without being disrespectful because uh, black people are very sensitive about their culture and, and things I like no that. And they're what very. That's like. And I tried, I actually had seen right. my friends earlier and she's going through a situation right now um in which she was fired so oh yeah 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 yeah. so that i i uh, i'm literally uh, and, you know you told I'm me waiting about that. for probably the next episode and i'm just gonna fucking put a whole bunch of shit on blast because i really want to um but i did you know i hung out with her that's a hostile work yeah. environment if you allow somebody to spout off racist or any kind of hate speech or anything that makes you uncomfortable or makes you feel unsafe at work that's a hostile work yeah. environment so i understand that she was like free speech but when you're making somebody well, else incredibly uncomfortable actually. and creating this is a different <laughs> Oh, okay. Well, I'm sorry. I thought we were no, talking about no, that no. situation, about, but no, whatever. But it, it goes hand in hand. You're completely right because right. we have one uh, a girl that is white who is um, a, an alliance, and she doesn't appreciate the the staunch fucking racism at her job, and end up getting fired. And then I actually have a friend um, who is of mixed race, um, 
but she was fired from her job as well, as well as well, another uh, black female at their workplace because they brought to the manager's attention the staunch racism going on, and they have both been fired in the last two weeks. Um, you know, I didn't. I I had. I'm a white woman, and I I uh, I've never been fired about racism or had that issue. But I understand how that feels because I was fired after trying to bring um, to attention a supervisor that was extremely abusive to the point of cruel and a hostile work environment. And instead of dealing with it, I mean, they have turnover. They lose um, girls in that office. Uh, they, let, they don't even last a month. And that's been going on for two years. I mean, it's just a rotating door. And I tried to bring it to the attention of the owner. Um, and instead... Uh, they walked me out at five on a Friday with, with, they were like, they pulled me back in the office at four 55 and they were like, um, so today's your last day. Uh, that's how much notice I got. So that was a fun weekend scrambling around. So I don't, I, 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 I haven't been in that situation with racism, but I definitely understand what it feels like to go through the proper channels and just get slapped just, in the face by and life. Be, and that's one of those things that where there's a lot of, um, I think kind of rolling back to where we had started at some point, which we know we started with astronomy and now we're talking about sexism and racism. But uh, we were talking about uh, sex and TV shows. We were talking about Blackish, which is an amazing television show. Um, even if Let's it's. Back to, real quick, the episode they did last night was about prisons and um, things like And it was just. It, I, I had to pause it and share it with Miles just because I was like, this is so right on what we talked about you know so but go ahead no, no, i'm sorry no, you're fine like we were talking about um well i was speaking of the middle which is actually the opposite like the complete opposite of blackish it's the whitest blackish, right. whitest uh blue collared family and there was an article that was put out uh, a very well written one i believe it was on bustle um that talked about how we're we're losing this is the last season of the middle and so we're losing the last quality yep. blue collared and what what tv is missing right now and yeah we, we have the american horror story we have um we have our diehard fans of like we don't have anything that represents us i mean we had married with children roseanne you know we, we've we always had, had a sitcom and, and for a while we that had the, the cosby show and jokes about being broke. the cosby show got i mean Blackish mm -hmm. came out in the most uh, amazing ways. Um, and so you're like, hey, by the way, if we want to talk about how we can kind of um, meld this all together, if we can meld together what we're talking about, we're talking about in the beginning of this entire podcast 57 minutes ago <laughs> was... Uh, uh, I can't believe we filled up a whole hour because we were done with that paper at like 20 minute know, mark. We like, really uh -oh. were. Oh, shit, we're sore well, now. How, how do you not see um, all of these things is that when we talk about somebody like Bill Nye, the science guy, a.k.a. the whitest Bill science Nye, guy, science versus guy. Neil deGrasse, Sorry. which is, you know, um, go, go, the blackest go, science go, guy go, that we go, all can go. put our, 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 our faces to, there are, I mean, that's right there one extreme white scientist one extreme black scientist and we've meld them together as being the best of friends and, and they are a powerful yeah, duo and right now you know i'm melding together the middle which is a very white blue collar family fucking struggle living in a ranch house like i love that show it's getting ready and i'm gonna cry like a bitch i'm gonna probably do like an entire episode of just me wee weeping <laughs> but uh <laughs> Now, Miles weeping. I get really attached. I think I've talked this about this episode like, brought to you by Kleenex. I think. Uh, <laughs> well, we've talked about. I have a sincerely problem with like my attachment to some television shows, and uh, but then you have too. like the middle and the and, and blackish, and those have been a significant factor in my television watching because. Um, I grew up with Growing Pains and The Cosby Show. And again, you're dealing right, with where they were two rich. doctors. But we're dealing with two doctors of two different races. Is dealing with two different aspects of things. But now, we all know that Bill Cosby and his fucked up life. And then we also know of Kurt Cameron's fucked up mind. And so, unfortunately... Oh, man, and, and we recently crazy. lost Alan Thicke. So... 
But unfortunately, some of these old shows, uh, you were speaking of the 80s and the movies and the things that have changed you, um, is the same aspect of how we're trying to, my fear is that once something like the middle goes off and blackish goes off the air is what are we going to integrate next? And I really hope that maybe our Saturday mornings will be filled with more cartoons and some Bill Nye, the science guy. I hope that I, I love the, Yes, that would be nice. Ooh. And I think the thing about the, the, film industry is you know it's not it's actually kind of a younger industry and you've seen that you know through the 20s you know they called them the, the pictures and then they called them the talkies because they had talking and them. you know they were silent talkie i really love black and white movies um just the style of acting i always really liked and uh i think we learn from what we produce and somebody take just like with music you know that's how rock and roll was born was oh i like what you're doing there you know and it's evolved into something so i think tv we see that it comes on and you know black is just opening a lot of doors and a very non-confront i think that's what it is for white people they can sit there and they can learn without feeling offended i don't know i don't know how to explain it yeah i no, don't know how to explain it's it like it's, 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 it's almost like it's voyeurism. It it's, it's you know not that they're... it's like you can observe black people and and how they feel and how they relate to each other and how they relate to white people and learn a little bit about how to interact with black people and 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 where they're coming from you exactly. know exactly and so on that it's note we need to learn how to not only interact with each other but we need to learn how to interact with science because even though back to the beginning back to the uh, age, <laughs> back to the age um we need to learn how to interact with science people we need to understand that if you're not following uh the science resistance page on facebook you should and I'm not saying that because it's a sign of resistance against Trump. I'm saying that you should follow them because the facts and the articles that they are putting out themselves for free. Uh, for free. free. Like and us. Because <laughs> I'm telling them you guys are on our Patreon. But you guys should uh -huh. really... Um, experience yourself and it's something that makes you uncomfortable and if learning about the cosmos or astronomy or astrology makes you feel uncomfortable that's okay with me i want you to be um a little uh uncomfortable in your seat in the way that you feel um so that you can understand that there's a world much bigger than you and that is much deeper than you and as long as you go out there and understand that there were people who were literally shot and killed just to prove that the earth is round and that the oceans move due to the tides of the moon that if you have a little bit of respect for that you should spend five minutes a day off of Facebook and on a science page learning just one thing I mean just one small snippet about how you know something that you know that you're not gonna get I get it you're not gonna get the math and the science right. but just take five minutes learn, learn something new yeah, every day and, and science is all around us and we're not going to find the cure for cancer by putting our head in the sand and we're not gonna find the cure for depression or um, drug abuse or systematic fucking you know uh, people's bullshit in general if we don't find what the triggers are and that is all found through scientific data and that's what I've got that's my moment of bullshit also I don't think that was bullshit uh, at all buddy also by the way uh, hi uh, you know side note uh, from like 20 minutes ago Wayne's world oh, was yeah. directed by a woman and I just found that out my mind is completely fucking blown Blown out the oh back, y'all. It's gross. But Wayne's World was a completely man movie directed by a woman. Uh, so props to that, and props to scientists, and props to our astrologers, and props to all of us for listening to our podcast. You know what? And props to all of these TV and and all the opportunities that uh, TV producers and whatever are getting to introduce us insight into other cultures and whatever and we tend to talk about black people a lot but let's not forget that we also love indians and asians and we love the entire color spectrum i know we tend to kind of 
talk about black and white issues a lot, There's but a lot of, uh, I just wanted to say the gray that. area, and it's not that the yeah. Hispanics I really or the Syrians or the Muslims okay? that you guys don't matter to us because you do. <laughs> yeah. We will we'll we'll do a some yeah. research and we'll 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 make sure that we dedicate a podcast completely to making sure that we are also, um, you know, as equal as 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 possible. There's just some things that right yeah. now that I think that we feel um, things that I mean. Need to be addressed right yeah, away. Well, they need to be addressed right away because, again, me and Randomly. Crawford have both talked about how we live in very white Republican towns, and um, our some people don't ever leave, so they think this is this is how the world is, and like the whole world is, and that's not. not. Get out and travel, and you meet other people, and you realize that there's a whole lot more to the world than your tiny little town of 25,000. <laughs> exactly, or your tiny town of 40,000. So. And that's just what it's saying. Not everybody feels yeah. that way. Go 50 miles west. <laughs> it would be amazing you if know? they drove like an hour and a half south and really just lived somewhere. Let's go to Indiana. Oh, God, you know? right? <laughs> Take your ass on down to Tennessee. Come on. I mean, we got neighboring states, people, and Ohio's so big. You can go to one, one of them. One of them. Come on. All right, Crawford. <laughs> bring it home. Um, Okay, listen, everybody. First of all, we love that you come to see us on our website, milesandcrawford.com. Uh, we post our episodes on there so that you can listen to them anytime. Um, and we also post random, well, mostly Miles. Um, she posts rants on blogs. there. Yes, she does. And uh, she gets lots of views and uh, she even gets replies and uh, she gets a lot of, woohoo, nice. I like that. That was good stuff. I like that. Good, 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 good game you know i'm slapping her on her butt i'm not but i'm coast to coast so I'll take it. hopefully you'll feel that 20 minutes you feel mm. it okay um but you know we have a, a patreon site we're on stitcher radio tune in google play itunes um you can find libsyn soundcloud you i even export our stuff to youtube for people who like to listen to whatnot on youtube um and we're on iheart radio so there's literally no excuse for people not to listen to us it's just i mean outside of the fact that we're annoying <laughs> <No>. <laughs> guys come on just no kidding. but we there's a hole and um i'm gonna go ahead and give a small shout out to my lady pod squad members um the lady pod oh, yeah. squad they y'all have been amazing stuff. to us i know that you guys are hitting the end of our podcast and maybe next week we'll hit you up at the beginning of our podcast but you all have been amazing uh if you are a podcaster and you or and or you're just a female uh follow the lady pod squad on facebook on reddit or on twitter um you are going to get the best of uh the female world and they're not just doing feminist podcasts these ladies are doing um Anything, anything and anything everything. From, I mean, any category oh you God, can think of. Just like from men. health to true crime to uh, there's one I was Movie seeing reviews. to do today that they they're all they they're these two girls and all they do is eat these really fucked up snacks and they give like every bit of their enjoyment. Yeah. Like, it's so great. It's so funny. So make sure that you don't just support us, but you support female podcasters because we're awesome. <laughs> uh, we have plenty to contribute as Absolutely. well, friends, and that's all we were trying to say. So uh, we're running a little over here. Uh, thanks for tuning in, and every yeah. hey, thanks for tuning in, everybody. Um, what are we talking about next we're, week? We don't know. know Look what this turned into. We, this turned into astronomy and racism. It was great. Well, we were. Kind of, you know what? I, I we never really know. I mean, we kind of just take a couple ideas. Like we'll talk about this. I'm pretty sure we didn't even finish some conversations <laughs> or points we wanted to bring oh, up. We're gonna talk about Thanksgiving. Let's talk about Thanksgiving because yep. Thanksgiving is next week. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm thankful for uh, the time I spent with my family at Thanksgiving because I don't see them too often and they annoy me a little bit. But I do like that one day a year where I can go eat. Visit with my family and then leave when I'm absolutely sick of absolutely. them. Absolutely. Um, and that is me. I'm, I'm thankful I'm, for the fact that I <laughs> find new recipes every year that I get to try. And my family is my testers for all the ridiculous shit that I come up with. So thank you. Uh, <laughs> I honestly, on my serious thankfulness, uh, sometimes I don't always feel like it, but I am blessed. Uh, I, I always sometimes wonder, like, how, but. I am blessed compared to, you know, a large percentage of the world. And I try to keep that in mind when I'm having a bad day. So that is what I'm thankful for. I am actually somewhat blessed with a good life. And uh, I would have to agree. Um, 
actually, that's why I want to be in my next podcast. I think um, what I would like for us, oh your I'm next sorry, podcast. Our, I apologize. <laughs> I, dude, I literally stopped myself. I, I was like mid. I'm like, I mean, that was a shit saying. <laughs> My bad. No, I'm just joking. I know you. I, I know, know what you meant. <laughs> our next podcast, I would think that it would be really nice for us to uh, throw some shout outs to those who are doing the Christmas drives. Today, I was reading a story yeah. from WTOL about a 10 year old. His Christmas wish was for Christmas snacks. So he would have a Aww. snack to eat during snack time, during lunch, or during school time because he's the only kid in his class who doesn't have snacks during the week. Oh, I read that it's, too, little sweetheart. So I want, I want us to understand forward. that we're coming upon a time where your ten dollars could go so far for a turkey. Yeah, it, it could really change children, and if it's not just in your area, please understand that you can donate to. New York City to Columbus, Ohio to Finley, Ohio to um, wherever Chicago, you're North Dakota from. from California. Make sure okay, that then. you pick one of those little pretty stars off of a Christmas tree and find out that maybe a 14 year old isn't asking for an Xbox One. Uh, one of them was actually just asking for a new dad. So there is a lot of things that are out there. Uh, one was a boy who was asking for feminine hygiene because his sister had to miss school one week every month because she doesn't have anything to stop for her period. These things are real, and I think that maybe we should dedicate some time giving a shout-out to all the wonderful um, non-profit organizations who are helping these kids uh, during a very hard time while we might be suffering through political bullshit and racism and, and, and trials and errors, is that there are some people who don't even have... Uh, not only do they not have a voice, but they may not have a home or the food. And I would like to make sure that we are dedicating part of our um, hour and 15 minutes to letting them know that they may they do make a difference. And even if somebody that's listening us to us in the UK or India or China or all the other places, um, if you even dedicate to our uh, Patreon and said that you want us to spend that money um, on a child's gift, we will, I would gladly, I will gladly go shopping. Oh, that'd be fun. It would be so fun. I will gladly go shopping and you send me the kid and the address and I will gladly go spend um, between 10 to 20 bucks and helping put that gift in your name. That's not a problem at all. I'm not a millionaire, but I will tell my kids that they're not going to they have to I wait a month. I will dollar tree it up and make it feel like it's a millionaire yep, up in here. I no, I'm I kidding. Will. I wouldn't do that for Christmas. But, <laughs> Anyways, I'm sorry. That's a know. whole other thing. I apologize. I'll get off my high horse. Uh, well, now you just spent 15 minutes of our next week's <laughs> podcast. Now what are we going to talk about? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, that was uh, some great stuff. Definitely. We, you know, it's all about being kind to community and that's what we are always trying to push for so therefore we definitely right rounded this all back up no loose strings boom we locked it down the age of aquarius everybody it is upon us wake up bye